So before we start the class, we would like to humbly offer uh, the ladies' garlands, which is going to be offered by Shivani Kitanya Prabhu. Oh, thank you so much. Beautiful garland. And then uh, the uh, Puna Kumbha. Oh, Hare Krishna. Kumbha. And some garlands uh, and, and the uh, Deepa Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yeah, next Maharaj, we will uh, take you and show you the darshan of the deities, Maharaj. Okay. okay. Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, we would like to humbly invite you to deliver today's lecture, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janabala Bagiri Bharadhari Gopi Janabala Bagiri Bharadhari Yashodanandana Braja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Magyana Timarandasya, Gyananjana Shalakaya, Chaksurun Militanye Natasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Namaom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Precharine Nirvisesha Shunyavari Paschatya Desha Tarine Vancha Kaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So on this very auspicious day, which is the appearance day of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, we would like to speak some words in glorification of our Founder Acharya. Of course, today is also Nanda Mahotsav. It's a feast for Nanda Maharaj, who has been blessed with the birth of Lord Krishna. So it's another aspect of the mercy of Srila Prabhupada that he appears the day after Janmashtami. Last night we were celebrating Janmashtami, and today, well, last night we celebrated the Appearance Day of Lord Krishna and today we're celebrating the Appearance Day of His Divine Grace, Abhay Charan Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is, of course, very dear to Lord Krishna. Now why? Why is Srila Prabhupada so dear to Lord Krishna? This is what we want to discuss this morning. Srila Prabhupada is very dear to Lord Krishna because he has taken shelter at the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. He had taken shelter at the lotus feet of Lord Krishna since his very birth. Srila Prabhupada was blessed to be born in a Vaishnava family. His father was a great devotee of Krishna. And Prabhupada told us different things about him Prabhupada told us how his father never wanted him to become a, a worldly person. Prabhupada explained, he said, when he was a young man, there was some talk that Srila Prabhupada should go to the West and he should get his education in the West and maybe become a lawyer like that. But Srila Prabhupada's father would not allow it. He said, I don't want my son to become a worldly person. And it was Srila Prabhupada's father who arranged for our, our Srila Prabhupada's education in the Vaishnava culture. Things like playing the Madanga. Srila Prabhupada, as a young child, he learned to play the Madanga. And then, of course, he was also very expert in playing harmonium. Srila Prabhupada tells us, he said, he said, when he was a young man playing the harmonium, he said some girls wanted to marry him simply because of his harmonium playing. <laughs> so another aspect of Prabhupada's father was he would always ask the guests who came to their home to bless his son that he would be a devotee of Srimati Radharani. So, uh, oh, also Prabhupada also said he always remembers his father, how every day his father would come home and he would worship the deities. He would see his father bowing down and doing the puja of the deities. And then it was also his father who uh, arranged for Srila Prabhupada as a young child to do Rathiatra, to hold his own Rathiatra and to have a festival with the other local children. So it was Srila Prabhupada's good fortune that he was born in such a devoted family with a wonderful father who was a, a pure devotee. Prabhupada describes as a, he was a pure devotee. Uh, one of the incidents which happened, Prabhupada related when he was a child, he was very sick one time with fever. And the doctor came and the doctor said, you have to give this boy chicken soup. And so mother and father were both shocked because they said, we're vegetarian. Our whole life we've never taken chicken. The doctor told them, if you don't give him chicken soup, he will die. So they were very worried what to do. And so somehow they made arrangements to prepare some chicken soup. But when they tried to feed it to a Srila Prabhupada, he vomited 
And so that was the end of that. They never tried any more. So these were some interesting anecdotes from Srila Prabhupada's childhood, his life with his father. And Prabhupada explains later on, when he met his own spiritual master, he said, his own spiritual master, Om Vishnupad Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Thakur, that everything which he learned from Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Thakur was already taught to him by his own father. His seminal father had already taught him all of the arts except for one thing. The one thing which he learned from his spiritual father was the publication and printing of books. And that became a major part of Srila Prabhupada's life later on. Srila Prabhupada told us he had very little association with his own spiritual master. He met him, he said, four or five times. They had met in 1922, that was at Uta Danga. And uh, at that time, the very brief meeting, Srila Prabhupada understood the potency and the purity of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. And Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati had challenged him that, you are a nice young man, why don't you preach the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the world? So at that time, Srila Prabhupada responded that, our country is not free because Srila Prabhupada at that time was dressed in white kadi, the kadi, and he was a follower of Mahatma Gandhi. So he said, our country is not free, we're still under the British rule. When we get freedom for our country, then we can preach the message of Lord Chaitanya. But Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada did not accept. He said, no, the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so important, it cannot wait for some political adjustment. And in this way, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati smashed the argument, whatever arguments our own Srila Prabhupada could give. And Srila Prabhupada admit, admits, I was defeated and I understood this, this is a real, genuine sadhu. And later on, well, Srila Prabhupada explains at that time he was a young man, recently married with a child. He could not think very much about taking up Krishna consciousness. However, after some time, Srila Prabhupada had moved. This was in Otadanga in Calcutta they first met, 1922. Then he went, to, he'd moved to Allahabad. Srila Prabhupada had moved to Allahabad, what place which is now called Prayagraj. And uh, he'd opened a business there, Prayag Pharmacy, chemical business, and uh, he met the Gaudiya Mat. The Gaudiya Mat people came there and uh, they told him about what they were doing. They were trying to open a center there. So he helped them and, and he also started to visit their center and at some point then Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada came there and Srila Prabhupada was introduced to him and he was initiated by him. So that was 1933, Srila Prabhupada received his initiation. And Srila Prabhupada received both initiations at the same time. Srila Prabhupada explains, he said his whole life he'd been following the principles. He'd never even tasted tea. He said, although many of his friends were very sinful and had so many bad habits, he himself had never even tasted tea. So it was not surprising that Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada agreed to give him both initiations. Usually we see we have first initiation and then, the, you know, take some time and see how the people do and then after some years they may get second initiation. The second initiation meaning the, the Brahman thread and the chanting of Gayatri. But Srila Prabhupada, being well educated, 
he not only knew English, he was also a Sanskrit, he also knew Sanskrit. So this was quite special even in the Gaudiya Mutt. There were not too many people who knew these kind of languages. So Srila Prabhupada was a very special devotee coming into the Gaudiya Mutt, knowing English, knowing Sanskrit, and playing the Madanga, all of these different things. And so it made him uh, quite well known within the Gaudiya Math. But not everyone liked that. Some people would be jealous and some people would be envious. And so some difficulties were there. And anyway, Prabhupada was doing his business. He had a family to take care of, young children. There were three boys, two girls, five children, big family. And then the business also had difficulties and Prabhupada often had to travel. But he would help. He would help the Gaudiya Math. He would do service. He would help them to raise funds. So his service was always appreciated. At one point, they had met with Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. This was in Mumbai. They were the devotees from Gaudiya Math were opening a branch in Mumbai. And our Srila Prabhupada had gone there to help them to raise funds. He knew some business people there and he helped them to get some donations. So there was some suggestion that our Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada should be the temple president there in Mumbai. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati said, no, no. He said, leave him. In the future, he will do everything. So he, he did not want to disturb Srila Prabhupada from his family life. He thought better, let him finish his duties in family life, and then we hope that he will go on. And of course it happened like that. The Srila Prabhupada's spiritual master, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, left the world in 1936. So he had not been well, and Srila, our Srila Prabhupada took the opportunity to write to his spiritual master. And he said to him that, I am in the family life, I am a grihasta, I don't know how I can help your mission very much. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati wrote back to him and told him that you are very good in English, so you can use the English, English is like an international language, you can use your English to preach to the world. That will be very good for you and for those who hear you. Srila Prabhupada therefore took this instruction very seriously and in 1944 Srila Prabhupada began his Back to Godhead English magazine. He was printing it from 1944. At this time he was moved, he had moved to 1944, he must have been maybe in Delhi or maybe back, still in Calcutta, back to Calcutta. After his business failed in Allahabad, then he moved back to Calcutta and uh, he was at home, but it was difficult. Prabhupada said he was trying to preach. He was and he would make programs at home. But his family were not very favorable. He would take the children to the Gaudiya Math and so on. But gradually they grew up and they went their own ways. They were not so much interested because they had to maintain their families. They had to make, make livings. And they did not take the spiritual culture very seriously. And Prabhupada also tells that his own wife was not much interested and she had a habit of drinking tea. And he suspected that on one occasion when his books went missing, he had, Prabhupada had books, Sanskrit books, that they went missing, that he could never find, couldn't find them. What happened to them? Nobody knew. He suspected that his wife had taken them and sold them to get money to to buy biscuits and tea or something. And so this was not very pleasing. You could understand that the home situation was not so satisfying. 
When the money is not there, then the family are not very appreciative. So long as the money is there, then there's no problem. But as soon as the income stops, then there were problems. So the servants also, there were servants in the home, they also would, uh, began to leave because no money to pay them. So it was difficult. Therefore Srila Prabhupada decided it was time to move on, that he started to go to Vrindavan and he left home. Well, actually he said, he asked his wife, he said, do you want tea or do you want me? So his wife said, tea or you? I'd rather have tea. <laughs> so that was it. That was like the, 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 the straw which broke the camel's back. And Prabhupada decided, I've, have, I've had enough of this home life. And he left and he went to Vrindavan and he lived in Vrindavan. So Prabhupada changed his ashram only with the greatest reluctance and he did not immediately take sannyas. He was staying there in Vrindavan as a vanaprastha and he was trying to do some writing and he was trying to, still trying to publish some editions of the Back to Godhead and doing some writing and he would do editorial work, some of the different heads of the temples, the Godiamats, they were writing their books and they wanted editors. And they, want, they were publishing a magazine and they wanted editors and Srila Prabhupada was well qualified for that work as an editor. He would do some editorial work for them. But they would not give him any facility for preaching. And they didn't, they, they didn't recognize him as a preacher because he was still just out of the householder life and they were sannyasis. So they were thinking, we are the sannyasis, we are the preachers. And Prabhupada did not get much facility to talk. It happened uh, um, even, to, even to get cloth, new cloth sometimes would be difficult for Prabhupada. They saw Srila Prabhupada more as a businessman than as an actual devotee. They did not really recognize his talents as a preacher. So Srila Prabhupada tried to do some preaching on his own and he went first to a place called Jansi. Jansi is a small town uh, south of Vrindavan, south of, south of Mathura, on the way towards uh, Jaipur and Prabhupada went there and tried to do some preaching there in Jansi and he got a number of people, a number of followers but he was trying to get a building but somehow Prabhupada was cheated out of the building and it went to some other society. So Srila Prabhupada was a bit somewhat discouraged there but after some time he had met one man who said that his son had moved to America. So when the man to told Prabhupada that his son had gone to America and married an American woman there, Srila Prabhupada said, request your son to sponsor me that I can also come there to America to preach. So Prabhupada did not take it very seriously and he forgot about it. And it was some time later when he met the man again, then the man told Prabhupada, he said, my son sent sponsorship. So it was a shock. It was a little surprise for Prabhupada. He never thought because sometimes we say these things and nothing happens. But somehow this man's son took it seriously, a Mr. Agarwal. And the Agarwal, the son of Agarwal, he sponsored Prabhupada to come to America. But still there were a lot of other details Prabhupada had to, to take care of. He had to get so many different approvals from different government offices that he could go out of the country and that he could go to America. And it, it took a lot of dealing and Prabhupada had, of course, no money to go on the aeroplane. How is Prabhupada going to go there? He's going on the boat. 
And so he went to see, he knew this one lady who lived in Mumbai, Srimati Morariji, and she was a, the owner of a shipping company. She was a widow, and she was a, a devotee of Srinathji. She was a follower of Balabhacharya, which means Pushti Mark. So Srila Prabhupada knew her, and Srila Prabhupada had earlier gone to her, and he had taken a donation form from her for printing of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Somehow Srila Prabhupada had began the translation of Srimad Bhagavatam and with the help of different donations he was able to print three volumes of all from the first canto. Of course printing a book in those days was really difficult. It was really a lot of work. You really have to labor, you know, the, and Prabhupada was doing everything himself. And even the computers, you know, they're all very mechanical and so, so difficult. But somehow Srila Prabhupada was able to produ produce three volumes of Srimad Bhagavatam, all on his own, Sanskrit, word-for-word -word translation, commentaries. And this was the beginning of his Srimad Bhagavatam. And Later on, when he eventually did go to America, he had boxes of these Bhagavatams packed up in cases, and he took them to America. So Srila Prabhupada went to see the Srimati Morariji, and, and he spoke to her and told her his desire, that I want to go to America. And she said, oh Swamiji, you're so old, you're already 70, you'll die there. I don't think you should go there. You just stay in Vrindavan. But Prabh Prabhupada pleaded with her that, no, I really have to go, you please, I have to go. And Prabhupada, I think several meetings took place before she agreed. And then she said, I will give you return journey so that you can come back. So that ship was not, it was not a passenger ship. It was a cargo ship. So Prabhupada was given one tiny room on the ship and Prabhupada, as we said, he, he had arranged for some boxes of Bhagavatam to be packed up and put on the ship. And Prabhupada was ready to go to America. And just before he went to America, the, the ship he left from Calcutta. Prabhupada came there. He didn't go to see his family. But his son did come, the youngest son, named Vrindavan. One son was called Mathura, one son was called Vrindavan, I forget the other name of the son. But uh, like that. So Vrindavan came there to see his father off. And he was watching his father go on the ship and he, was, he, he describes Radna Swami was asking Vrindavan Das, what Vr Vrindavan, the, the Vrindavan day, the Prabhupada's son, he was asking him, what, what were you thinking when you watched your father go on a ship to America? And he said, I was thinking, I'm so proud of my father. He was very proud. Actually, I had a, a, a talk with Vrindavan, uh, Prabhupada's son. He's like, you know, because he's Prabhupada's son, I'm also Prabhupada's son, so we were like brothers. And I was speaking to him on the phone. He called up the temple one day, so I was talking to him. And he said to me, just by the way, he said to me, he said, you know, you don't know how strict my father was with us. <laughs> he said, you don't know. I could understand, you know, I, I could understand a little how strict Prabhupada is. Certainly, we would see sometimes Prabhupada would get quite angry. And certainly Prabhupada had... He had high standards. He wanted things done properly. And if we d didn't do them properly, he would really be quite angry and chastise. However, of course, his chastisements were always loving. And it was always, the, it's very purifying for us to be chastised by the spiritual master. To get, that is the mercy of the spiritual master when he chastises you. 
Srila Prabhupada tells us also how he was chastised by his spiritual master. The incident happened that Srila Prabhupada was sitting listening to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada give a lecture and they were sitting in an auditorium and some elderly man behind Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada touched him on the shoulder in the middle of the lecture. So Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada tells us, he said, I turned round to see what was wrong and as soon as I turned round, immediately Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada stopped his lecture and shouted to us and he said, and you too, what are you doing? He, and he said to the elderly man, he said, do you think you have purchased me because you give five rupees donation every month? And then he said to our Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, he said, do you want to come up here and give the talk? Srila Prabhupada said, I was mortified. It was the moment of greatest mercy, the, spirit, the mercy of the spiritual master, the chastisement of the spiritual master for our purification. So Srila Prabhupada was strict. He was strict. He, was, he wanted things done properly for Krishna. And he had the highest standards. And we see that in temples and deity worship, that the standards in ISKCON are usually very high compared to other temples. You go to other temples and they're somewhat run down, not very well maintained, the deity worship is not very regular and so on. But Prabhupada wanted everything done so nicely. One time I was in Krishna Balaram temple room and it was midday arti. And arti, I thought, oh, I, I should do kirtan. So I got kartals and I began to sing and lead the kirtan because very few people were there. And then after five minutes, Prabhupada's servant came out. At that time it was a sannyasi called Akayananda Swami. And he came out and he said, Srila Prabhupada wants to know, why is no one playing the madanga? Prabhupada was sitting in his own quarters and he could hear that somebody is doing kirtan, but he cannot hear madanga. So Prabhupada, he had he'd been listening so carefully and he was so concerned about the standards, what standards we have in ISKCON. He said, when there's kirtan, there must always be madanga. So <laughs> I said, well, I don't play madanga. So the sannyasi had to stay there and play madanga for us while we had kirtan. That was just one example, Prabhupada, how he wanted the standards, what standards he wanted us to keep. Everything must be perfect, must be nice. He really wanted that. So Srila Prabhupada got passage on that ship, the Jaladuta, and we know Prabhupada on the Jaladuta is it's not a big ship. And the Atlant had to cross the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. And sometimes crossing the ocean, you can get big storms, big waves. And it's really difficult. It's really, you know, you go on these ships and the ship goes up and down. And it's really, no, it's not, not a joke. It's really an austerity. As Srila Prabhupada was on that ship, he had to cross the Atlantic. Fortunately, the captain, who was the uh, Captain J Josie, I think it was, uh, he said the Atlantic was very peaceful. He said he'd never seen the Atlantic so calm. It was the mercy of Krishna to protect his devotee. Because Srila Prabhupada, in crossing on the Atlantic, he had already endured two heart attacks. So he could have left the body on the ship. He had two heart attacks on the ship. The, his health was not so great, although he was always, he would use Ayurvedic medicine. He didn't like Western medicine. Usually he'd have some Ayurvedic remedies for everything. 
So Srila Prabhupada, would, he had to un undergo that journey on the ship and of course while on the boat he also wrote prayer, he wrote his uh, arrival prayer in USA, wonderful prayers and prayer to Srimati Radharani, very beautiful songs which Prabhupada wrote, prayers actually, Prabhupada writing, appealing for the mercy of Krishna and Srimati Radharani. Prabhupada prays like, I do not know why you have brought me to this place. Most of the people are covered by passion and ignorance. I do not know how they will ever be able to understand the message of Vyasadeva. But I know you must have some reason, otherwise why would you have brought me here to this place? So now make me dance, make me dance, make me dance. This is just one verse from Prabhupada's prayer. Prabhupada was very poetic in his writing. And you see, although he was Bengali, his English was very high standard. The English, his English language, very high. You read Srimad Bhagavatam, it's not simple English. Just a minute. Sorry, I had to t stop the workers, they're doing some renovation work here, banging. Okay, so we were talking about Srila Prabhupada and his writing, his high level of English. Not only English, very high, of course Bengali, he wrote, Prabhupada had written Gita Gyan in Bengali. He'd written a number of articles in Bengali, Bengali is his mother tongue. But he was very proficient in English because he studied in Scottish churches schools. And his Sanskrit also, he could translate everything. So Srila Prabhupada was very qualified to establish the Krishna consciousness movement. And he got to America and first of all he has to go to, well they had arranged somebody to receive him, he didn't know where to go and he only had a few dollars in his pocket. Where did he get it from? He sold a set of Bhagavatams to the captain of the ship. The captain of that Jaladuta, which Prabhupada was, was riding on, that captain purchased a set of Bhagavatams from him and he gave Prabhupada $20. And Prabhupada said that was the only money he had. He had some rupees, that was all. Not many rupees, I think 50, 60 rupees and $20 given to him by the captain. And Prabhupada said that was a few hours spending money in America. So he came off the ship in Boston, he didn't know where to go left from right, someone was there to receive him and they took him, they arranged for him to take a bus down to a place called Butler in Pennsylvania where this Mr. Agarwal lived with his American wife. So Prabhupada went down there and stayed with them for a little while and they arranged some programs, they arranged Prabhupada's accommodation in the YMCA and Prabhupada would go to their home regularly and cook for them. And they loved it, they loved Prabhupada's cooking. Of course, Mrs. Agarwal, she was an American lady, very nice lady, very favorable. And she loved Prabhupada and Prabhupada would come there and he would cook for them he would, and he would be looking at the, in their fridge and see the different frozen vegetables and so on. It was all very new to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada was in this way became familiar with life in America. But he saw Butler, Pennsylvania is just a small town, he couldn't do much there. And so he moved, he moved from there, he moved to New York. And in New York he had the connection to one Dr. Mishra. Dr. Mishra somehow, he's a, a Bengali man, 
who had established a yoga ashram in New York City. And this, some Prabhupada, somebody had given him his address and he went and met Dr. Mishra and Dr. Mishra agreed he would give him some kind of accommodation. And so he, was, he arranged to put Srila Prabhupada in some room somewhere and Prabhupada was staying there in New York in the home of Dr. Mishra and he, Prabhupada would go to the yoga ashram to meet Dr. Mishra and he'd meet the students, the yoga students of Dr. Mishra and Prabhupada would sing a bhajan and give them a talk. But Do Dr. Mishra, of course, he was a mayavadi and he didn't like Srila Prabhupada coming in and preaching to his students. <laughs> so it wasn't too happy, it wasn't too successful. He stayed there for some time but then he heard that it would be better for him to move down to the Lower East Side because there were a lot of young people and there was a lot of interest in spirituality there. So Srila Prabhupada took the opportunity, somehow he, he got the chance, he met somebody, he found somewhere to stay and he moved down there. And he was moving from one place to another, staying sometimes with people who were not very devoted. One time he was even staying with one young American man who was a drug addict. And so finally it was arranged Makunda, who was uh, that time Michael Grant, became Makunda. He was Prabhupada's, one of Prabhupada's first disciples. He took the initiative to get help Prabhupada find a place. And they found that 26 Second Avenue. 26 Second Avenue, it's called uh, Matchless Gifts. The name of the store had been Matchless Gifts. Someone had opened a gift shop. Gift shops are very common in America. You know, people like to buy gifts for each other. They have a lot of money, so people like to buy gifts for each other. So there's many gift stores. So this had been a gift store, but it closed down. So they saw it, they looked at it, and it was quite suitable for a place to have a meeting. So Prabhupada began to rent that and have lectures there. And then also they found there was an apartment at the back, just above, and Prabhupada moved in there. And this way they would have programs and people would come. A few times a week in the evenings they'd have a program. And Prabhupada, what would he do for prasadam? Something he'd just take an apple, cut it up, give everyone a piece of apple. And then he would pass a hat around and ask everyone, give some donation. <laughs> and in this way, Prabhupada was beginning the Krishna consciousness movement. So, some of the people who were coming there, they helped to make a registration. Prabhupada wanted the society registered. They only had a little storefront, but Prabhupada had big vision. And they were surprised. He called it the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. At that time they only had one place, a little place in Manhattan in the Lower East Side, on rent. But Prabhupada was calling it International Society. They were surprised. They think, what kind of this? International Society? <laughs> what is this? How is it? Anyway, Prabhupada had his vision. He was very clear about what he was doing. And when some, some of the people, Makunda and his wife, they moved to San Francisco, Prabhupada told them, you try to do something there, introduce Krishna consciousness to them. So after some time, they got a letter, they got a letter from Makunda saying that, come, we want you to come to San Francisco and meet the devotees. So Prabhupada was in favor. He agreed and they sent Prabhupada plane tickets. It was Prabhupada's first air flight. Usually Prabhupada had only been on the boat to come from India. But now they arranged Prabhupada to take the airplane, New York to San Francisco. And Prabhupada came there to San Francisco in the 1960s. And it was a very revolutionary time. There was a lot of counterculture. There were many young people with long hair and beads and so on, and people were really interested in spirituality. So Prabhupada moved there and had very nice program. 
began to preach there, people began to join. Then Prabhupada got them also to make Jagannath deities and the, the Jagannath deity appeared, remember, in, in, the, in the gift store. And one devotee brought the little doll, showed it to Prabhupada, and Prabhupada said, this is Jagannath. And then he got devotees, he said, this is very auspicious. He said, Lord Jagannath has appeared to us. So he, he encouraged them to make, to carve some big size Jagannaths. And so they carved them and then they installed them in the temple. And in a very simple manner, they did worship. They would have a big candle and everyone would come forward and wave the candle around a little bit. So this was the first temple, the beginning. This, like this, Krishna consciousness was beginning. Prabhupada had a long way to go. He, the temples began to open more and more. He sent people to London. And although it was really difficult, and they really struggled. After a year or more, they got success. And they were able... I'm sorry, I tried to get this guy to stop work, but they don't listen to me. I don't know what to do. I'm sorry, you just have to put up with the noise in the background. I can't do anything about these people. They're very uncooperative. I'm sorry. Anyway, we only have a little time left. Maybe we'll just stop here and we'll ask if there's any questions from anybody. Anybody has any question? Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, did uh, Prabhupada reveal uh, who is his identity in uh, Guru Kaurandavan? No, Prabhupada did not. Prabhupada said, you don't need that. Prabhupada said, that's not required. No power here. Power went off. Okay. So Prabhupada did not reveal his identity in Vrindavan Vila. No. We are all servants of Krishna. Everyone is a servant. Whatever wrath you have with Krishna, you are a servant. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Javar Bahai Nitya Krishna Das. Everyone is a servant. That's what that's a, what you need to know, the identity. We're all servants. Lord Balaram is a servant. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes as a servant. So Srila Prabhupada is the greatest servant. He is the servitor personality of Godhead. He comes to show us how to serve Krishna, how to serve the spiritual master, by preaching the message of Krishna consciousness, by preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya. Just like we offer our obeisances to Srila Prabhupada, Nirvasesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Desatarine, Preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya to defeat impersonalism and voidism. That is Krishna consciousness. That is what it means to be a servant. You preach, you go out and tell everyone about Krishna. Yari Deki Tari Kaho Krishna Upadesh Amaragai Gurahana Tarae Desh. Prabhupada often quoted Lord Chaitanya told the Brahman and Kurmakshetra, wherever you go, whoever you meet, you tell them about Krishna. And in this way you become a spiritual master and save the world. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Nachatas man manushyeshu kishin me priyakritama. There's no one more dear to me than that devotee who's preaching Krishna consciousness. So we want to preach, we encourage everyone, become a preacher. This Krishna consciousness movement is meant for 
distributing. We don't just, we're not just bhajan and nandis. And even though there's lockdown, we don't just do bhajan, we do preaching. It's an opportunity for more preaching. So devotees are finding ways even to distribute books, even during the lockdown. They're distributing more sets of Bhagavatam because people are at home. They have more time now to read the books. So get the Bhagavatam, get the Chaitanya Charitamrita. There's so many other books. Read Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. Read all the books about Prabhupada. Read Prabhupada Lilam Rita. There's so many wonderful books to be read in Krishna consciousness. We have so much to do. So we don't just do bhajan, we, we have to also preach. As, as Prabhupada's spiritual master said to him, you tell people about Krishna, write about Krishna, that will be good for you and for those who hear you. So whatever we hear, whatever we've heard, whatever we've learned about Krishna, we should be willing to share it, to distribute it to others. It's not just for our own self. We have to give Krishna consciousness everywhere, go everywhere and try to distribute the message of Krishna. Prabhupada always taught us there are so many people waiting for us to come there to find them. We, have, we just have to be willing to go. And those of you who are preaching, you know, when you go around, when you go outside, when you go around, visit some place, you always find people interested to hear about Krishna. There's always people just waiting to get Krishna consciousness. So this is our duty. If we, if we appreciate Srila Prabhupada's gift, if we appreciate what Srila Prabhupada's, Prabhupada has done, we should also take up that work. We should follow in the footsteps of Srila Prabhupada. Not, not imitating, but follow in the footsteps and do like Srila Prabhupada did. Chant, preach, write, publish books, worship the deity, take up some service for Krishna. Don't just be idle. Don't just sit and read the newspaper and watch movies and listen to mundane songs. Make use of our time to establish the mood of Krishna consciousness. So today is Srila Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja. It's an important day. Very, it's the most important day for all of us. And this festival should be the biggest of all the Vyasa Pujas. Of course, you may have many Vyasa Pujas for different spiritual masters, but this is the most significant, the most important of all the Vyasa Pujas, because Srila Prabhupada is the founder Acharya of our Krishna Consciousness Movement. So all over the world, all of our ISKCON centers, all of our ISKCON devotees, they're all taking part in this program. And everyone also should have written an offering and they should have written something and be willing to read it aloud and share it with us. If you haven't written anything, at least you can speak, you can share something, something which inspires you about Srila Prabhupada, something you got from Srila Prabhupada, uh, maybe you like to tell Srila Prabhupada about what we're doing and how we're spreading Krishna consciousness. Okay, so today we're releasing the pen drive. Right, Prabhu? Krishna Kirtanam, Krishna Karanamrita Prabhu? Today, the, our center, a temple of devotional understanding, is releasing a pen drive which has 45 different series of the Abhay Charan movie. Srila Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj had uh, spent, yeah. a, spent a lot... Yeah? Yeah, 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, thank you so much for your wonderful lecture on the appearance here of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Siddha Prabhupada. Uh, uh, now we would like to go into the next event, which is the 